We've been inviting hockey fans in Winnipeg not only to use Twitter to send their comments and suggestions for team name, but to send pictures as well. This sent just moments ago, a twit pic uh, showing a, a gathering looks to be in the thousands now, building up at the Forks right in downtown Winnipeg, anticipating just a couple of minutes away an historic news conference uh, with the Atlanta Thrashers moving to Winnipeg. The official announcement, which has been delayed by 15 minutes, is uh, coming up just a couple of minutes from now from the MTS Center in uh, Winnipeg. So uh, uh, lots to talk about, James Duthie, before you get talking about the Stanley Cup final. Uh, the Canucks, who knows, might have a division rival a couple of years from now after realignment in the form of uh, the new Winnipeg team yet to be named. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, Roberto Luongo, a couple of weeks ago when uh, Darren Drager first Approached the idea of the Atlanta Thrashers moving to Winnipeg, said, does that mean I get Dustin Bufflin back in my division? That uh, probably will mean that. Not for a year anyway, Roberto Luongo, but he's prob they're probably headed back to the Northwest. He said that with a smile on his face. I don't think he's that, that concerned about it. He has other concerns right now. Back with Dave Naylor and Bob McKenzie. Uh, Rod called it historic, and it is a historic day. Whenever a hockey team in the National Hockey League is added to Canada, uh, it's a historic day. Here's the way it's looked through the years as far as percentage of Canadian teams in the National Hockey League. Back when there was only 12 and 2 and 67, 68, 79, 80, we highlighted that's the expansion year when it went to 6. And it's gone to 7, 8, then down to 6. 7 out of 30 will be 2011, 2012, 23% of the entire National Hockey League based in Canada. How important is this? What, what does this signify? For Canada and its importance in the NHL. Well, I think the, the first thing, if you go back to the mid 1990s, around the time when the Winnipeg Jets were leaving and the Quebec City and the Quebec Nordiques were doing the same thing, the dominant stories in Canada were about a sinking dollar. They were about brain drain. I mean, we lost the World Cup of Hockey to the United States on Canadian soil in 1996. There were a lot of reasons for Canadians to kind of have self confidence and doubts. And when you look at where things have gone now, the strength of the Canadian economy, the dollar above par, we have the Vancouver Olympic gold medal. And kind of the final piece is an NHL team coming back to Winnipeg. So I think there is a larger narrative that's playing out here. Although I don't think it necessarily reflects a, a philosophy on the part of the National Hockey League saying, okay, we're going to take all our questionable franchises in the United States and we're going to move them all into Canada. Conceivably, could it happen in Quebec City down the road if they get an arena? Yes, it could. This is a unique circumstance. And the unique circumstance simply is this, that Mark Shipman had the vision to get in the, for, for there to be an arena in Winnipeg, to have an American Hockey League franchise to keep the thing warm in Winnipeg, and to go to the National Hockey League and say, I'm prepared under any circumstances at any time to take whatever franchise happens to be coming along. All right, you saw the live shots of Gary Bettman and the ownership group arriving in Winnipeg. Let's send you out to Winnipeg for the news conference to announce Winnipeg's return to the NHL. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Scott Brown. I am the Director of Corporate Communications for True North Sports and Entertainment, and I'd like to thank those of you here today at MTS Centre for joining us. And would also like to thank those of you tuning in live across the city, across the province, and across the country on either television, radio, or streaming live on the internet. Today's announcement is one that many have been waiting for with great anticipation for the past 16 years and I think the last 12 days have demonstrated that in some very vivid detail. True North Sports and Entertainment has long maintained that our goal as an organization has been to bring the best entertainment the world has to offer to this province, whether it be the best in the music industry or the highest caliber of athlete in the world of sports. Since MTS Centre opened in November of 2004, the citizens of this province and this city have made it one of the most popular facilities in Canada, North America, and in the world. We hope today that we are offering them another reason to make it so. The organization is thankful for the public support. We have invested in this community in the past and now, once again, we plan to do so for the future. But at the same time, we are asking the community to invest in that future along with us. Today marks the most significant announcement thus far as it relates to the City of Winnipeg, the province of Manitoba, True North Sports and Entertainment, 
and the National Hockey League. To make that announcement, I'd like to call upon the Chairman of the Board of True North Sports and Entertainment, Mr. Mark Chipman. Thanks, Scott. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Um, in the spring of 1995, I was uh, very fortunate to become closely involved with our community's efforts to save our NHL team. I came away from that experience with a deep sense of disappointment, uh, but also the realization that our lack of success was not anyone's fault. Rather, after 17 years, the economics of our city and the NHL were no longer compatible. While the loss of the Winnipeg Jets uh, in many ways had a profound effect on the psyche of our city and province, I believe it also stiffened our resolve to press on and jointly move our community forward. One of the ways our family joined in that effort was through the investment in what was then the very next best level of hockey available in North America. With a commitment to run the Manitoba Moose Hockey Club to the greatest extent possible, as though we were still in the NHL. With the support of a fantastic group of sponsors and Moose fans, we were able to quickly gain an understanding of the business of professional hockey and turn our attention to the dream of building a new facility in downtown Winnipeg. In 1999, we took the first steps toward making that dream a reality and in 2001, we entered into what would become an incredible partnership with David Thompson, who embraced the vision we had for downtown Winnipeg. We were joined in that effort by a number of like-minded Manitobans and with the support of the city, the province and our federal government, we opened the doors of the MTS Centre in November of 2004. At the same time, the National Hockey League was engaged in an exhaustive effort to correct the underlying economics of its business model. A few years prior, I uh, had uh, met and began to establish a relationship with Gary Bettman through my involvement in the merger of the International and American Hockey Leagues. Although I suspect he may not recall it, I remember telling him at that time that I expected our city would one day again take membership in the NHL. I continued to make that point at every opportunity and was always given a thoughtful response. Finally, in 2007, we were asked to make a presentation to the Executive Committee of the Board of Governors on how and why we felt an NHL team could succeed in Manitoba. With the assistance of a number of other Canadian NHL teams, we developed a very thorough understanding of the modern economics of the game. The pursuit of that knowledge has never stopped. Throughout that process, our relationship with Gary and his team at the NHL continued to develop, and I believe a high level of trust was established. And two other very significant series of developments occurred over that same 15-year continuum. Firstly, our community continued to invest in itself and as a result has been able to move forward on many levels, notably against the same economic headwinds that brought the rest of the world to a standstill. And secondly, during that time, our organization grew up and it matured and in my humble opinion has long since operated at an NHL standard. In fact, over the years, many of our Moose staff, our trainers, our coaches and players, including several that will compete for this year's Stanley Cup have been called up to pursue their NHL dreams. While it's always been gratifying to see that occur, it's also always caused us to ponder what it might feel like if one day our organization might receive that same call. Today, on behalf of my family, our partner David Thompson, and our entire organization, I am excited beyond words to announce our purchase of the Atlanta Thrashers. In a sense, I guess you could say the true north our city and our province has received the call we've long since been waiting for. Now, as Mr. Bettman will explain in a moment, this transaction is subject to the approval of the NHL Board of Governors on June 21st. Amongst other things, the League will carefully scrutinize our community's capacity to be a stable and productive member of the League. Later this morning, you will also hear from our President, Jim Ludlow, who will explain in detail a process that we believe will ensure our ability to satisfy the League's interests. Allow me to say that I personally have no reservation in this community's ability to do so. Before you, uh, you hear from Mr. Bettman, allow me uh, to take this opportunity to thank, thank several individuals who've played a vital role in the extraordinary effort that was necessary to bring us to this day. As I hope you can appreciate, 
Transactions of this nature are very complicated and require a team of highly skilled and passionate professionals that are apparently willing to work right through the night. In that regard, we've been blessed to work with Carmel Peter, Rob Lee and Brian Lerner of, from Aikens, together with Lawrence Zucker and Len Pace of Osmington, and Brad Peacock from McGill-Stevenson. As well, we've had the benefit of the skill and knowledge of our own Jim Ludlow, John Olford, Norva Riddell, Dorian Morphy, and Scott Brown from True North. And I would especially like to acknowledge the incredible contribution of Mr. Terry Morris of Allen & Company, without whom, frankly, I'm not sure I'd be standing here today. You will also be hearing from Premier Greg Selinger in a few moments. The Premier has enthusiastically supported the return of the National Hockey League since we first presented the idea to him well over a year ago and has played a vital role in bringing this possibility to a reality here today. I'd also like to uh, acknowledge Mr. Bruce Levinson of the Atlanta Spirit for the honourable and professional way in which they engage this transaction. And finally, I wish to thank Mr. Gary Bettman and the entire staff at the National Hockey League with whom we have worked with over the past several years for their guidance, trust, and the respect that they have shown us throughout the entire process. I need to also acknowledge my family who have been frankly incredible. Um, and my partner David Thompson who uh, has been uh, absolutely steadfast um, throughout what at times was a very turbulent process. With that, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce the Commissioner of the National Hockey League, Mr. Gary Bettman. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Welcome, everyone, this morning. And it is nice to be back in Winnipeg after all these years. I want to start out by thanking Mark Chipman and David Thompson for their patience, their professionalism, their perseverance, and persistence. Uh, Mark has been pursuing the NHL, as you heard, for a number of years, quietly and obviously quite effectively. No doubt that this pursuit reflects the passion of our fans in Winnipeg. And while Mark has been working behind the scenes with us over the years, staying in touch, working the process, and keeping the lines of communication open. At the same time, the owners of the Atlanta Thrashers have been looking to sell their club. Uh, over this period of time, no real local purchaser emerged, and ultimately Atlanta's ownership, which has made it clear that they want out, uh, reached outside the Atlanta market. As is obvious by the fact that we're here today, True North and Atlantic Spirit early this morning reached an agreement that would bring the NHL back to this city. And when I say early this morning, I won't be telling tales out of school to tell you that we were with others were actually on a conference call at 4.30 this morning Eastern time, and it wasn't done yet. Uh, this transaction and the club's relocation are, as Mark said, subject to the approval of the NHL Board of Governors, and it is our expectation that this matter will be on the June 21st meeting agenda. As we have said repeatedly, we don't like to move franchises, but sometimes, even if it's been 14 years since the last time we moved the franchise, sometimes we simply have no choice, as it was the case back in 96 when the Jets left Winnipeg. At that time, and for a variety of reasons we don't have to go into today, no one at that time simply wanted to own the Jets any longer in Winnipeg. To our fans in Atlanta, we are not happy about it leaving Atlanta. Please be assured it was never about whether Winnipeg is better than Atlanta. The decision to come to Winnipeg was made only after Atlanta's ownership made the decision that they were going to sell, even if it meant the club was going to leave Atlanta. So with that decision made, it is clear that times have changed for Winnipeg as an NHL market, 
and this is a wonderful time to add a club to Canada. Hockey in Canada has never been stronger. The NHL has a different economic system that allows these so-called smaller markets to compete. The NHL is coming off another season of record revenues in both Canada and the United States, and our prospects remain extraordinarily bright. This venue, the MTS Center, will be a fine, fine home for an NHL club, and there is the strength of the prospective ownership group. Uh, we now also, and perhaps this is the most poignant point, we get to be back in a place we wish we hadn't left in 1996. With this background, the best way for our fans here in Winnipeg to celebrate the opportunity is to buy season tickets. Selling season tickets, selling 13,000 season tickets, is the best message to send to the NHL Board of Governors before they meet on June 21st. And to be candid, this isn't going to work very well unless this building is sold out every night. There is no doubt that NHL hockey has tremendous support here, and we know we've had tremendous fans in Atlanta. The fans in both cities have been through a lot the past several weeks, and hopefully everyone is now in a position to move forward. I certainly will be happy to take questions later. I'm going to turn things over to Jim Ludlow, but again, thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Actually, we're uh, going to thank one of the parties first that is uh, without their support. As Mark mentioned, um, this would not be possible, and that most notably would be our provincial government. And to offer a message on behalf of the province, I would like to call upon the Premier of Manitoba, Mr. Greg Selinger. Well, NHL, welcome home here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. It's great to have you back here. It's great to have you back here where you belong. And uh, we've missed you, and we're going to make it work forever now that you're back. There's been a lot of talk over the last 15 years about what? About the NHL returning. But as we all know, what makes a great hockey player just isn't talk. It's how you perform on the ice. And that's what Mark Chipman and his team of True North have done. They've buckled down and performed and got it done and brought the team back to Winnipeg. Wayne Gretzky once said, you shouldn't go where the puck is. You should skate to where the puck is going to be. And that's what Mark and his team have done. They've skated to where the NHL should be, right back here in Manitoba, right back here in Winnipeg. And we're so proud of this achievement and excited to have them back here in Manitoba. It's a fantastic day for all of us, and we could be just thrilled by what we've accomplished here. But you know, I was thinking about this when I remembered we retired Mark Keene's sweater just this winter. And Mark Keene, when he was being talked about by Mark, he said he showed dedication, perseverance, and community commitment. And as I was thinking about that, those are the qualities that Mark and his team have shown. Dedication, perseverance, and commitment to the community. And that's paying off for us today. So where do we go from now? We know that 15 years ago, things were different in Manitoba. Today, we walk with confidence. Today, we walk with a feeling that anything's possible. And the NHL team is a symbol of that great optimism that we have for the future of the province. Downtown Winnipeg is much different. With the cooperation of all three levels of government, we now have the MTS Center. And it has proven to be a great success. There were naysayers. There were people that said it couldn't be done, it shouldn't be done, and it can't be done. We've proved them all wrong. It's been a fantastic success on every level, as a performing arts center, as a hockey center, as an asset that has pumped excitement and other redevelopment into the downtown. So now the second step has just been completed, the buying of the team. And we all heard about how difficult that was and how hard it was to bring that transaction to fruition. And I want to thank all the people behind the scenes that don't normally get recognized for all the work you've done. It's always very complex to bring these transactions to fruition and everybody's worked exceedingly well together. So now it's up to the rest of us. It's up to the rest of us to step up and show that we can support this team by buying season tickets. I know I'll be doing that. I know a lot of you will be doing that in this room. We'll all come together as a community. 
We'll meet that $13,000 13, target for season's tickets. We'll have a great success in doing that. And you know what? The NHL is going to be here. It's going to be here for good. And I mean that in every sense of the word. Thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Premier. Uh, now we're going to get down to the nitty-gritty a little bit of today's announcement. Well, today is indeed a day to celebrate for Manitoba hockey fans. It is also the beginning of a short period of focused commitment from these same individuals. To explain, I'd like to call upon the president of True North Sports and Entertainment, Mr. Jim Ludlow. Thank you, Scott. Uh, didn't uh, expect it to be as emotional and surreal a day as it has turned out to be. When Mark was speaking there, I uh, was a little choked. Uh, it is a very, very special day for all of us. I do want to welcome, on behalf of True North Sports and Entertainment, uh, all of you here today. Uh, for many of you, as you know, in the sports media, this building has become a second home to all of you over the past few years. For others, perhaps our media friends from Toronto in attendance here today, this may be a first of many visits to come. Welcome to Winnipeg's new home of NHL hockey. A decade ago, True North had a simple vision of developing a state-of-the-art sports and entertainment center in downtown Winnipeg. In November of 2004, this vision became a reality as True North opened the MTS Center as a dramatic new sports and entertainment landmark right here in downtown Winnipeg. Today, the MTS Center is renowned throughout North America for its success in terms of diversity of entertainment, attendance records, management and operating expertise, and consistently busy entertainment calendar. Since 2004, over 6.4 million people have enjoyed over 1,100 different events at the MTS Centre, including world-class performances by Keith Urban, Elton John, Van Morrison, Eric Clapton, Celine Dion, Coldplay, and the Eagles, to name just a few. The MTS Centre has been a leading-ranked venue in North America since the day it opened, was the Canadian Major Facility of the Year in 2009, and while consistently in the top five, has risen as high as third in Canada and 19th in the world in Polestar Magazine's top 100 list. Our Manitoba Moose have been the benchmark franchise in the American Hockey League since coming into the league in 2001 in terms of revenue and revenue growth, league-leading attendance, management innovation, and overall passionate fan support. Meeting and exceeding expectations, a dynamic culture, an ethic of basic hard work and discipline, the strength of corporate organization and community, a collective desire to move ahead, the skill and expertise of all of our staff, all taken together, have provided True North with a confident base from which to move forward. As Mark mentioned earlier, we have carefully and, and very carefully and quietly monitored developments in the National Hockey League over the past number of years and always understood among ourselves that if the right opportunity, opportunity arose and at the right time, we would consider executing on this next logical step, not only in terms of expansion of our business footprint, but in the expansion and progression of the collective mindset of Manitobans living in a dynamic, healthy, and progressive, forward-moving community. With that in mind, we are thrilled today not only to have made the announcement regarding the purchase of the, thrasher, of the Thrashers, but are very excited to formally kick off our drive to 13,000 season ticket sales campaign in support of the new NHL Hockey Club in Winnipeg for the coming 2011-2012 season. As mentioned, the purchase of the Thrashers will be subject to NHL Board of Governors approval on June 21. Among other things, Board approval will consider the level of support generated in Winnipeg during a season ticket campaign. The drive to 13,000 is this necessary season ticket sales campaign advanced in the Manitoba marketplace by True North for the successful sale of 13,000 season tickets prior to this board meeting. The success of the drive to 13,000 will ensure the long-term viability of an NHL team in Winnipeg and will allow our fans to showcase their support by participating in a season ticket drive that will secure NHL hockey in Manitoba for years to come. The drive to 13,000 will start tomorrow, Wednesday, June 1st at 1 p.m. and will include a three-day priority pre-sale available only to Moose season ticket holders and mini-pack holders and our corporate partners. This advanced pre-sale will end Friday, June 3rd at 10 p.m. NHL season tickets for the 2011-2012 season at the MTS Center will officially go on sale to the general public this Saturday, June 4th at 12 noon. As of 11 a.m. this morning, our new drive to 13com website 
interactive and informative as it is, is now live. Drive to 13.com will be every fan's roadmap to placing a deposit on and purchasing season tickets for the upcoming NHL season at the MTS Center. Truly interactive and designed for ease and efficiency, season ticket transactions will originate online and only through this website. Fans are directed to log on to www.drivetothirteen.com using all of the helpful prompts to navigate through the website, linking finally to ticketmaster.ca to complete this purchase transaction. For NHL Hockey in Winnipeg, the upper and lower bowls of the MTS Center have been rescaled into seven price categories, now known as P1 to P7. A pricing exercise in any given marketplace necessitates the balancing of a number of market-specific variables. In arriving at what we believe to be the seven ideal price categories in the MTS Center required a careful review of a number of key variables, including our market size and capacity, our building size, team operating costs, Canadian market comparables, and our history with existing hockey customers over our years of operation in the AHL and at NHL exhibition games. The results of this exercise have been considered and reconsidered. The numbers, the market comparables, all have been scrubbed and re-scrubbed. We think you will be pleased with the results and what will become True North's pricing for regular season NHL hockey at the MTS Centre. A premium P1 NHL ticket in the MTS Centre will cost $129. The entry level P7 NHL ticket is just $39. The full P1 to P7 ticket price ranges for NHL hockey at the MTS Center are referred to in the table on the screen. For as little as $39 per ticket, fans can regularly see the top hockey talent in the world. Superstars like Alex Ovechkin, Sidney Crosby, Winnipegger Jonathan Taves, and former Manitoba Moose Ryan Kessler skating here at the MTS Center this fall. On a full season ticket basis, these prices per ticket are then rolled up into a 41 regular season and four preseason game package. The full season ticket package prices per season range from a low in P7 of $1,755 to $5,805 in P1. The table on the screen illustrates the full season ticket package prices in P1 to P7. Half season, 22 and 23 game ticket packages are also available in P6 and P7, starting at prices as low as $858. The average ticket price for NHL hockey in Winnipeg's MTS Centre is about $80. The average price of a ticket in the lower bowl is just over $100, and in the upper bowl, which includes P5, P6, and P7, and represents over 45% of the drive to 13,000 inventory, the average cost of a ticket is less than $55 in the upper bowl. In terms of context, we've also considered how MTS Centre ticket prices might stack up against other relevant Canadian cities, for example, Ottawa, Edmonton and Calgary. The ticket package price ranges in those markets are as follows. In Ottawa, the range is 29 to $141. In Edmonton, the range is 30 to 176 In Calgary, the range is 34 to $180. Average ticket prices at the MTS Centre are clearly comparable to what other similar Canadian markets are charging their fans. At the same time, and those of you who have experienced a full house in Manito of Manitoba Moose Hockey at the MTS Centre know, the experience in the intimacy of our event bowl is second to none. As part of the drive to 13,000 ticket pricing exercise, we've also addressed what we believe are important value-added features for all of our customers in managing their purchase decision. Affordability, cash flow, seat certainty and price certainty. In response to these features, True North will offer all ticket purchasers convenient and affordable monthly payment plans which will provide them with an effective tool to participate as NHL fans at the MTS Center. In the case of a P7 full season ticket package, for example, the monthly payment is just over $146. In the case of the top ticket in the house, the monthly payment would be a little over $525 per month. We think these financing alternatives make a bunch of sense as available options to our fans. Even easier are the half-season ticket packages in P6 and P7. In both of those sections, the monthly cost for half-season ticket packages range from 70 to just over $100 per month. We believe NHL hockey in Winnipeg is well-priced. We are confident of how this ticket pricing will work within our broader financial model. We also feel it is important to provide certainty in this equation for the fans and for True North. Certainty of seat location year over year, certainty of ticket pricing for our fans 
and certainty of annual revenue for True North. All season ticket packages purchased by fans in all price categories will include multi-year rights and benefits. Based on the table referred to on the screen, which provides an outline of the term of commitment associated with each price category. Price points P1 and P2 have five-year terms. Price points P3, P4, and P5 have four-year terms. And in price points P6 and P7, P7, we have three-year terms available. The result in this case is that fans will have certainty of their seat location over the term. True North will guarantee that ticket prices will not rise by more than 3% per year during the term. And in exchange, True North can rely on committed annual revenue for tickets over the terms outlined. The proverbial quid pro quo, if you will. Taken together though, this recipe will provide for successful, long-term and sustainable NHL hockey in Winnipeg's MTS Centre. Now please allow me to jump back quickly to the mechanics of the transaction that will secure NHL tickets for fans this coming season. Once logged on to www.drivetothirteen.com, fans will find lots of helpful information including seating charts, ticket prices, seating maps, FAQs, top 10 things you need to know about the drive to 13,000 and among other things, a daily ticket drive meter. Navigating through the pre-sale on-sale drop-down menus on the website will eventually get all purchases to a place where there's a link to ticketmaster.ca, the site where the actual transaction will take place. At that point, fans will be asked to place a deposit on a seat in a particular price category. That deposit will guarantee fans the right to select the seat in that price category during a selection process which will occur after the successful completion of the drive. When it is your turn to select seats, you will be contacted directly and individually by a ticket sales and service representative from True North to begin this process. This process not only ensures one-on-one -on -one contact with our fans, it also provides an ability for our fans to select their seats in person at the MTS Centre. We estimate this process will take 8 to 10 weeks to complete post the drive. The deposit will be paid only once during the term. Based on the price category selected on seats, will range from $500 in P7 to $1,000 in P1. In the case of a half season selection, which is available in price categories P6 and P7, the one time deposit amount is as low as $250. Deposit proceeds will be held by True North and returned to the purchaser at the end of the term or credited towards a further deposit in the event the term is extended. As there is a pre-sale starting tomorrow available to Moose season ticket holders, mini pack holders and corporate partners, we expect demand to be strong through the pre-sale and very brisk during the on-sale. We would encourage everyone to log on in advance to familiarize themselves with all of the exciting True North MTS Centre NHL information on our drivetothirteen.com website. Transactions, as I said, must be completed online and phone orders cannot be processed during the drive to 13,000. With a successful drive, the availability of individual tickets will be limited. Your best chance for securing NHL tickets at the MTS Centre will be to purchase one of these ticket packages. So please remember, log on to drivetothirteen.com. Drive to the pre-sale starts Wednesday, June 1 at 1 p.m. The puck drops at noon on Saturday, June 4th for general public on sale. These are terrific times to be living in Winnipeg. Today is, as I've said earlier, a beautiful day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. I think we'll now take uh, questions from the floor. As I pointed out to those of you that are here earlier, we have a couple of microphones, wireless microphones floating around the room. If you have a question for any of the uh, participants here at the head table, please raise your hand and wait for the microphone to get to you. I will point to you and you'll wait for the microphone to get to you. Then there's no need to stand. Please identify who you are, who you're with, who your question is directed towards before asking the question. Mr. Lawless in the middle. Mr. Thompson, a question for you. Uh, uh, you've been a partner with True North for some time. Uh, what about uh, the Chipman family, True North, and the city of Winnipeg has made you want to make uh, this um, kind of an investment in a, in a city that you don't live in? That's a very good question. Um, I have a deep attachment to the city, to the province, and to the country. I go back longer than I'd like to remember to my Hudson's Bay Company days. And probably of every nook and cranny, certainly in this country, uh, the rural communities, there's, 
there's a heartfelt sense of community in Winnipeg and in Manitoba. I've always felt inspired by the leadership, by the ambitions, and there's been more than a tinge of regret in me, as with all other Winnipeggers and Manitobans, that the Jets left. And in working through the development of MTS and forging a rapport and a working relationship with Mark and his executives, we feel very, very, very strongly about one another's values and about the possibilities that lie ahead to actually move something forward that's distinctive and that makes a difference in people's lives. So I am committed to this community as I am to this country. It's about time. Well said. We'll go over here, uh, Sean Churchill, over here. Mark, uh, everybody wants to know, has a, a name been chosen and uh, where are we going with it? Uh, I have to tell you, I anticipated that question. Uh, name has not been chosen, Sean. Uh, I, I, Gary was uh, uh, quite accurate when he said we worked uh, right until the very early hours of uh, this morning to conclude this transaction. We have been singularly focused on that effort for many weeks now. And uh, while we know that subject is of great interest to the community, uh, we have not uh, fully engaged it yet. We it is obviously one of the first orders of business that we'll turn ourselves to now. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll do so very thoughtfully. Uh, I can assure you of that and everyone of that. Um, and hopefully have some news on that in the very near future. A question for Mr. Bettman. Uh, I'm Sean Reynolds with CBC. We're told there was just an absolute explosion uh, at uh, the Forks when this announcement went through. Um, Describe what it's like for you to be able to bring that kind of passion back to a place like Winnipeg. Well, I think we've been clear from the outset that we don't like moving franchises. We know how important a franchise is to a community. The emotional and financial investment that people make in NHL hockey and supporting their favorite franchise. Uh, we were extraordinarily unhappy when we left in 96. We had no choice. Uh, that's why with the celebration here, uh, there's obviously regret about what, what's happening in Atlanta. Uh, but to be able to come back to a place that we know loves NHL hockey, to be able to do it in, in a city that's changed with a collective bargaining agreement that's leveled the playing surface with this building, with ownership, these were factors that didn't exist in 96. So to be able to come back to, if you will, right or wrong, uh, that's always an extraordinary thing. And, and the sentiments that David Thompson expressed in terms of people's commitment, the community's commitment to come together behind something uh, is something that we value tremendously. So the opportunity to come back here, to bring a franchise back to Canada, which we know is the heart and soul of our game, is, is vitally important to us. Uh, and it's something that we're proud to do when the circumstances presented themselves. What's your, what's your expectation of what will happen June 21st if uh, that 13,000 tickets is not sold? Well, I, I never like to engage in speculation. And certainly there's been enough speculation over the last few weeks to satisfy anyone's lifetime of speculation. <laughs> <coughs> but to the point, uh, I never like to, to be presumptuous as to what the board will do, uh, and uh, it would be uh, difficult for me to contemplate with all of the extraordinary effort that David and Mark have gone to, the investment that they're making, and the outcry from this community since 1996. Uh, you know, I'm not going to even contemplate for a second the possibility that 13,000 aren't sold. It doesn't work, as I said, if this building isn't full every night. Leah? This question is for Mark. Uh, Mark, I'm sitting here beside Darren Millard. We're both born and bred here in Manitoba. And I got to say, when this team left, a part of the soul left of this province, do you feel today, as you made this announcement, that you have returned that part back within Manitoba? Um, 
Welcome home, by the way, guys. Uh, welcome back. Um, I, 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 wow. Um, I hope that that's how people feel about this. Um, uh, such a broad range of uh, emotion, frankly, uh, that uh, we're trying to uh, reconcile today. Um, obviously, we've been long since uh, very um, aware of how, how important uh, participating in this league is to our community. We were front and center when it, uh, when it left, and as I mentioned in my remarks, it was, it was a very, very difficult, um, disappointing process. Um, but I would say this, I, you know, as important as this may be, I think what is equally, if not more important, is the, um, the resiliency that this com community showed over the past 15 years. And that's why we've gotten another opportunity. We didn't, um, uh, you know, uh, wallow in self-pity. Um, a lot of the people that were involved in, in that effort to uh, keep the team here uh, mobilized very quickly onto other causes. And I think you, there's a lot of evidence of their work um, from and more coming from the museum that we're anticipating to um, new libraries and incredible capital campaigns at our universities. That really emanated from, to a large extent, from that group that gave it their best shot in the first place. So um, whether or not, uh, you know, we're restoring something, uh, you know, the soul of this community, I, I don't know if I can answer that. I think this is a great day for our community, but I think, I think our community has shown itself to be um, an incredible one for, you know, even in the vacuum that we've lived in, in terms of NHL hockey for the past 15 years. Uh, my question is for Mr. Bettman. Um, Mr. Bettman, uh, how much do you think this will raise hopes in cities like Quebec City that wants to have their team back in the next few years? Well, uh, the reason I'm hesitating to answer the question is because you all know, particularly those of you who cover us on a daily basis, um, I get extremely unhappy and cranky with raising expectations when they shouldn't be raised. Uh, if you go back a month ago, all of the reports that said there was a done deal to move the Coyotes, uh, and that was never the case, uh, had a disruptive influence on the locker room for that team as the team was starting the playoffs. It also, in addition to, to creating uncertainty for the players and their families of the Coyotes, it raised expectations here at a time where they shouldn't have been raised yet. Uh, we, uh, we, we believe that this situation, that is Atlanta moving, is unique to Atlanta. Uh, as we've gone 14 years without moving a franchise, other leagues have moved lots of franchises in that time. We will continue to resist moving franchises because, as I said, it's not about which is better. It's about where we are and trying to preserve the community and the community's interest and the community's identity and love affair with its franchise, and we're not going to trifle with that. So other communities shouldn't be reading anything into what's happening here uh, in, into any other situation, either with respect to speculation that a franchise may move or that another city is going to get one. That would be a mistake. It would be inaccurate. Uh, and so uh, people shouldn't get their hopes up uh, because we're going to continue to handle things as we did. Going back to the last question to Mark, I just want to add one thing. In all of my dealings with Mark over the years, and we're talking lots and lots of years his focus to me has always been about Winnipeg and about Manitoba. That's what I always took from him as to what this pursuit was all about. Almost single-minded in that focus. Darren, a question for Mark. When you took over the Moose and brought them here, you spent a lot of time selling people on, on the minor league hockey. You didn't like talking about the National Hockey League level very much. When did it switch for you that you thought maybe the National Hockey League would work again in Winnipeg? Do you remember that point in time? Well, I think that, uh, you know, clearly when, uh, when the NHL came out of the lockout season of 2004, there was a very, very different economic model, uh, prior to which we really couldn't even contemplate. Um, 
a return of the of the league. Um, you know, I, I mentioned that I, I think I mentioned it to, to Gary back in 2001, 2002, but I might have been dreaming, uh, frankly, in Technicolor at that time. Um, and, you know, it wasn't, <clears throat> when we tried to establish the Moose, it wasn't, uh, um, it wasn't easy, to be honest with you. It was, we had no idea. I, I, I'm not a, uh, embarrassed to say how difficult it was going to be to step into the void that was left. And it was difficult, uh, not just for myself, but for the people that came to work for us, that had to endure that every day when you're trying to sell a product that we were very proud of. Um, but I guess I, to, an to answer your question, you know, when, when, we, when, when the league corrected itself in a very, very significant way, uh, and we were able to, and we had, we had created some, some friendships with other Canadian teams that very quickly, uh, uh, you know, embraced the idea of helping us understand the new game. That's when we, we, did, we started doing the math, and, and we said, you know, we think this is very realistic, and I guess that's where, when it really began, was probably just coming out of 2004. Two more, Tim Campbell. Uh, Mr. Batman, Tim Campbell from the Free Press. Can you explain to us, uh, from the NHL's perspective, why this season ticket campaign is so important? Well, I think it, it, it probably is better to come from the people who are investing in the club. But the fact is, uh, it, 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 what? Yeah, uh, but I'll, I'll, it, there, there is a sense of excitement, a sense of anticipation. There had been a sense of loss. I don't think anybody has ever doubted that NHL hockey has great fans in Winnipeg, but unless the fans are prepared to support the franchise, it isn't going to work. And so there, there are two issues going on here. One, uh, I think it would be a good idea to tell the Board of Governors as quickly as possible that there's nothing to worry about here. This is going to be great. Uh, and two, uh, the economics of running a franchise, uh, particularly in this building, in this market, uh, require the support that having the predictability of season ticket holders will give you. And, and if I could just add to that, uh, Tim, I, I don't think it, it ought to be uh, perceived today that that 13,000 uh, season ticket level is being imposed on us, uh, you, you know, in, in, by, by the National Hockey League. Uh, uh, singularly, it, it's 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 a an, a an objective that we jointly uh, feel is is necessary and is achievable. Um, you know, when I first we first started talking to Gary about the reality of this, uh, that conversation came up very quickly. You know that that you're gonna we're gonna need to be able to demonstrate and the the community's desire to to invest alongside us. And I I don't I don't mind saying, uh, you know, this is a very significant investment for uh, for our family and and for David and. So we are of, of the same mind. We really are. This is not being imposed on us, but it has been, you know, we, we do understand it. it. It will be looked to very, very carefully, and I understand that, and, and we accept that. Final question, Arash. Uh, Arash Madani, Roger Sportsnet. Mark, Jim, I'm not sure which, which of you will answer this. With the draft just over three and a half weeks away, Rick Dudley signed a contract extension. Where do things stand from a hockey operation standpoint, and who's going to be in charge moving forward from a management and coaching standpoint? Um, so thank you for that question. Uh, very good one. We have got a lot of work to do. Uh, I've known Rick, by the way, for 15 years. We go way back to our, our, my first years in the International Hockey League. Have a very high regard for Rick. Haven't spoken to him. Expect to do so very shortly. You're correct. We've got about three and a half weeks to, until we select seventh overall, which we're very excited about. I would tell you that Craig Heisinger, who has been our general manager and who is uh, responsible for a lot of that talent that's going to start playing for the Canucks tomorrow night, he will be a, a very have a very significant role in our in our hockey operations. Exactly uh, which title and, and which role he and I are, are uh, we've been kicking around for a couple of weeks as this became real. Um, but we owe it to to Rick Dudley and to the rest of that organization to get with him as quickly as possible because they're they're people with families and, and expectations and uh, so we will uh, we'll be turning ourselves to that right away. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize I couldn't get to everyone's questions. That's going to do it for the formal Q and A. For the members of the media that are here, True North Sports and Entertainment, I'm going to issue a press release beginning tomorrow at 4.30 every day, which will give you an update on the uh, drive to 13,000. So that's just a technical matter that we'll take care of. We're excited about this next step in Manitoba's hockey history, and we hope the province is equally as excited as we are, the people of this province, and we hope to be here again in just a few short days talking about the successful completion of 13,000 
and the successful return of the NHL to Winnipeg. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Rod Smith back inside the Sports Center newsroom. You've been watching this uh, Sports Center special report, the NHL returning it to Winnipeg. Uh, live news conference that's gone on for the last 50 minutes at the MTS Center in Winnipeg. Uh, now the future home of an NHL team in the fall that was the Atlanta Thrashers. The move still pending a vote by the Board of Governors, but uh, not foreseeing a difficulty at the Forks now. Fans gathering and celebrating. Fifteen years ago, they rallied to save the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, they could not, but they're celebrating now as a, a team many would like to see called the Jets again is destined for Winnipeg as the National Hockey League is to return. So it's certainly a day of celebration in Winnipeg, Manitoba today. Uh, a bittersweet day for Gary Bettman, uh, as you heard his comments, not wanting to move a franchise. But Canada celebrates, as does the Prime Minister of Canada, this is a statement from uh, the PM, Stephen Harper, uh, moments ago. Today is a historic day for Canada's game. On behalf of all Canadians, I'm extremely pleased with today's announcement that the NHL will return to Winnipeg. Hockey is Canada's great passion, and I'm excited that Winnipeg will reclaim its special role in our country's national pastime uh, release from the Prime Minister, uh, Stephen Harper. So, uh, one reaction, one of many that we are... Uh, a hearing today with the return of the National Hockey League to Winnipeg as we send you over to James Duthie. James. All right, Rod, and we should let you know lots more reaction coming up. We'll have all sorts of one-on-one -on -one interviews with all the key players involved. Let's hear from the guys down here. Bob McKenzie, Dave Neal, and Bruce Arthur from the National Post and TSN has joined us as well. Maybe not as emotional as we might have expected. It is a news conference. A lot of the emotion will be happening out on the streets and in the living rooms in Winnipeg right now. But they got to that season ticket drive right away, reminding us it's a business. First, your, your overarching thoughts on what you heard and what has transpired today. Well, obviously, it's a historic day and a great day for the hockey fans in Winnipeg. That's first and foremost. And you're right, James, at the Forks and everywhere else they will be celebrating. But what you saw there was a very carefully orchestrated news conference. Uh, with Mark Chipman, David Thompson, the True North group, they've been preparing for this for a long time. This is a button-down group, and it's by no mistake that they came out with the full uh, Monte, if you will, in terms of the season ticket package, what it's going to cost, where the seats are located, how long the commitment's going to be for, because they know the practical, hard financial reality of operating out of the smallest market in the National Hockey League. And that's what they're basically saying now is, it's, it's not the National Hockey League saying, you have to give us 13,000 tickets or we're not going to approve the sale. Because quite frankly, the NHL has nowhere else to go. They're in Winnipeg because they're in an emergency situation where they couldn't find a spot for the Atlanta Thrashers and the Thrashers didn't want to be there anymore. That's David Thompson and that is Mark Shipman saying, we need your money. If we're going to, we don't want to be in a situation where we're sustaining huge losses in this market. We need your help and we need it now. Well, I think... I think one of the things that news conference speaks to is, although there's a lot of enthusiasm about going back to Winnipeg, they understand there's a significant economic challenge here. And when they talk about the relationship between the NHL and True North Sports and Entertainment, how far it goes back, to go back to Winnipeg, they needed to go back with a group that had, one, the wealth to operate in that market, and a proven record as sports operators in that city, which True North has through the Manitoba Moose. A very business-oriented news conference, but I guess when you combine the smallest uh, market with the NHL, in the NHL with what will be one of the highest average ticket prices, uh, you better lay out the business case. They really had to do this. This will be the third highest ticket price in Canada, only after Toronto and Montreal. And people are going to say that this validates Winnipeg, and people are going to say that this defines Winnipeg. And I agree with the first, and I disagree with the second. I think what defined Winnipeg, is, and Mark Chipman said it at one point, that the, how Winnipeg reacted in the years between the Jets leaving, between the Thrashers arriving, that's Winnipeg. People thought that this city was going to disappear, that this was a death knell. Instead, population went up, unemployment went down, the economy got better. Winnipeg improved. And this time, it wasn't that Winnipeg needed the NHL. It was that the NHL needed Winnipeg, and that's a critical distinction. This was not, I don't think, a reparation in any way. This wasn't any kind of justice. This was business. And we are willing to pay for hockey and that's what they're going to do. One of the most interesting things I thought was Gary Bettman being as direct as saying, if this building is not sold out, this doesn't work. And you, know, you don't hear that very often in pro sports, where that line will be drawn. We basically say, this is the bottom line of how this team has to operate on a night-to-night -night basis. And to play devil's advocate, there'll be people who hear that and they'll say, well, wait a second, you don't hold the same standard to teams in the United States that are losing money hand over fist, that have empty buildings, whether it's Florida, whether it was Atlanta, whatever the case may be. But it's really just the overall 
You're, you're right. It, 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 the equation in professional sports is very simple. The only thing that makes sense is you have a building that works, you have an owner that has deep pockets and is fully committed because there are less than 10 franchises in the National Hockey League that make money hand over fist. For every Toronto or Vancouver or Montreal or Philadelphia or Boston, there are two franchises that are either breaking even, losing a million or two, or losing tens of millions of dollars. And the reason those teams exist is for one reason, because there's an owner who's decided he's willing to write the check for as long as he has to for what is probably an appreciating asset. And that'll be the same thing in Winnipeg. You talked about ticket prices, and Bruce mentioned third highest in the National Hockey League as an average ticket price. The average ticket price in Winnipeg will be $82, as Bruce said, just behind Toronto and the Montreal Canadiens, as that board is all full of Canadian teams. Those are the seven Canadian teams right there. So third highest. And also this commitment, five-year commitment. Not only do you have to buy season tickets, but you have to br promise to buy season tickets for five years at the top end. Bottom end, that's 3500 for a pair. Mm -hmm. Top end, 11600 for a pair. You project that over five years. That, that's a long, big financial commitment. It is. They do have. They gave the payment terms, though, so you you do have the opportunity. But you're right. If you want the lowest price ticket of uh, a season ticket, you have to commit for three years. For a pair of tickets, you're talking a ten thousand dollar, ten thousand five hundred dollar commitment, give or take a few dollars. And as I say, there's payments there. If you want to go to the high end, it, for a pair of tickets, you have to commit to five years as opposed to three, and it's a fifty-eight thousand dollar nut. But it can be spread out over time, obviously. Should we? Is that a concern at all? I don't think it's a concern now. I think they're going to sell these tickets. In the fact. concern is going to be in five years or three years or four years when these tickets are up for renewal. And maybe this team isn't a playoff team for that time. Atlanta's never won a playoff game. they got a, long, you got a lot of young players. but I'd be concerned sure if it was an expansion be. franchise because you know you'd have five years of losing, but there's a good chance this team will win whether it's this year or next well, year. Well, and buying a sports ticket is an emotional decision. I mean, it's, and so you want to make that play when the emotion is riding high, and it's never going to be riding higher than it is right now. And I think all along when we've looked at the business case for Winnipeg, it hasn't been questions about years one, two, and three. It's been what about after that when the novelty is gone, when the team is either succeeding or failing on the ice, and you're not going to have that heightened emotional awareness that you do right now as we see out there at the forks right now. Let's just listen for one second. And yes, go Jets go. <laughs> In, until they come up with a new name and that, that's not going to go over well, you know probably what? at first. They're going to yell it, even if there is a new name. There are going to be people in the crowd at MTS Center that will yell, "Go Jets, go!" Yeah. You can guarantee for at least a couple. It'll of be seasons. like Pot Van sucks at MSG to live <laughs> yeah. forever. And, and you know what? We can all sit here in suits and we can all crunch the numbers and talk about the nuts and bolts of it. But for most of the fans in Manitoba, that's what it's that's about. That's what it's all about: is that the National Hockey League is coming back. That's all they care about. But there is the hard business reality, and it was acknowledged by the ownership. They basically saying, "Hey, we're in for." this we're, we're right up to our eyeballs full commitment on this but we really do need your help and now we need your money it was almost an odd news conference because there is so much emotion we see it from the winnipeg fans and they've been waiting for this so long and then it was a powerpoint presentation on, <laughs> on season ticket prices and the, the blue section and the purple section but again the reality that it's a business so let's get to the bigger picture and gary bettman mentioned that this was a wonderful time to put a hockey team back in canada and that canada is the heart and soul his words of hockey is this just unique circumstances, or does this mean more as far as Canada's role in the National Hockey League? I think it means more, but it doesn't mean more just because we love hockey. It means more because they put a bunch of teams in southern markets that aren't going to be able to afford them. Winnipeg was what Atlanta is now. It's a slightly different market because in Atlanta they didn't care, but in Winnipeg in 1996 they did. But the ba bottom line was the same. They were teams that were losing money. And so what's going to happen now is that, yeah, they get the team back, and it looks like this great re-migration from the southern states but it's largely because they didn't have anywhere else to put this team. Well, yeah, let's take it one step further than they're losing money. They didn't have owners. I think the standard that moved the team out of Winnipeg in 1996 is the exact same standard that has been used to go back there. There's nobody wanted to own a team in the market where it was. They had to go a different way. Lots more from these guys ahead, but for now, let's send it back to Rod Smith. All right, thank you, James. And uh, for Mark Chipman, the culmination of years of work and a dream to bring the National Hockey League back to Winnipeg. Uh, when he spoke earlier, he talked about... Uh, really being a part of that process in 1995, trying to save the, uh, the, save the Jets and uh, the disappointment he felt then. So you can only imagine what he's feeling today. He is standing by now with Darren Drager back in Winnipeg. Darren? 
Yes, thank you very much. Joined by the chairman of the board for True North, Mark Chipman. And Mark, uh, it's been such a long road for you, for the fine people of Winnipeg, the fans of uh, formerly the Winnipeg Jets. How hard has it been? How difficult was this process for you over the years? Um, well, it, it hasn't been an easy one, but it, uh, I would say to you, it, it, it was made easier um, by virtue of the people that I got to work with. We assembled an incredible group of uh, of uh, professionals that you know, some that work for us every day, and others that uh, that came in to provide some guidance. Um, and as well, the National Hockey League has been um, phenomenal to work with. Um, you know, we've had this dialogue started many years ago, and and uh, you, they've provided a great deal of, of guidance. They showed us a lot of trust and a lot of respect. Yeah. So that that kind of smoothed out the bumps, I would say. Why was this opportunity different? Why did it work now when it didn't work in Phoenix a year ago? Was there just something specific that sort of turned the corner for your group? Well, I don't know that it was anything we did. I think it was really just what opportunity presented itself. Last year, you know, it was well known that we, we went to the 11th hour uh, on the Glendale deal. The city of Glendale uh, was able to, to, to pull a plan together to keep their team there, and we, we knew that was a risk all the way through the transaction. Um, I think as a result of that, though, you know, the, the league got to see what we were capable of in terms of... Uh, uh, marshalling the, the you know the assets and the wherewithal to to do a, a deal and and so I came away with that with a, a pretty clear understanding that uh, if another opportunity presented itself uh, we would get an opportunity and mm -hmm. and and that's what's that's what's happened and we got to act on it. You're about to launch a significant season ticket drive drive to 13. Commissioner Gary Bettman on more than one occasion during the press conference uh, just acknowledged the fact that you need to sell out this building in the regular season. Uh, to, to, to maintain viability in the National Hockey League. Is that stretching it or is that legitimate? Uh, well, no, I don't, I don't think it's stretching it. I think that, you know, um, we, uh, we have a building that fits our market perfectly, I think, and uh, it's going to have to be supported. It's going to have to uh, be filled, and, and we, we price the tickets accordingly. We think they, they mirror our market very, very uh, appropriately. We've we studied that very carefully, the other markets in Canada. The range is very similar. It's, it's lower on the, you know, on the top end. Uh, we're going to make it as affordable as we can uh, and easy for people to, to get involved. But clearly, it's a huge investment for our family and for, and for David. And we're just hopeful that the, 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 the hockey fans of this community will invest alongside us. Can we call this team the Winnipeg Jets yet? No, as I mentioned, Darren, uh, we no decision been made on, on a name. Uh, you know as well as anybody <laughs> that this, this, this transaction went in, uh, you know, not into the wee hours of the morning, but into the, almost the mid hours of the morning. And we have been singularly focused on getting it done and we will now turn our mind to to a name and and uh, as somebody pointed out in the press conference we we need to uh, engage the hockey operations staff of the Atlanta Thrashers uh, right away there's much work to be done there as well for nostalgic reasons though will it be difficult not to call this team the Jets um, well there's clearly a case to be made for calling it the Jets uh, but you know there's also uh, you know we've heard from a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, lots of thoughtful comments there's also a case to be made for, for looking, f you know, in, right. in a forward direction. So we'll give that a very careful consideration, and uh, and I will make the right decision. You bring up hockey operations. A couple of quick questions. We'll let you go. Uh, Rick Dudley is a, a four-year extension with the Atlanta Thrashers. Now this organization in Winnipeg, once it clears through the Board of Governors, Craig Ramsey as the head coach. Uh, is that going to be a difficult process that you and Craig Heisinger are going to have to wade through? Uh, well, it won't be. Uh, I don't know if it'll be difficult, but it's one you know that out of respect for for Duds and 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 the rest of his his uh, his crew, we got to engage right away. I've known Rick for many many years. I have a very high regard for him. Uh, obviously, haven't been allowed to speak to him, and and uh, and I'm sure that has been you know, uncomfortable and awkward for he and, and his entire organization. I don't know what those discussions will yield. As I said, uh, I, th I expect Craig yeah. to be a, a vital part of our, our hockey operation going forward, and and we're going to start there and and try and build the best organization we can. All right, before we le let you go, we know you're going to be a budget team. That's not unusual with a salary cap in the National Hockey League. But you will you be an aggressive team in terms of going after unrestricted free agents, and how difficult might that be? with a new team or a team coming back to Winnipeg? Well, I would say to you, no, we're not going to be that type of team to start off with. Uh, you know, we're not going to buy a team, Darren. We, we bought a, a right to play in the league. We're going to build a team. And uh, we've been around the business long enough uh, and in, been involved directly in the development of hockey players. Uh, and we have a model in mind that is, uh, is very, very much based on, on our draft and on uh, developing young players in the American Hockey League uh, and developing the kind of longevity with those kind of players that uh, will hopefully make us successful in the long haul. 
Mark Chipman, the chairman of the board for True North, a historic day for you, for your company, and certainly for hockey fans here in Winnipeg. Now back to the desk. All right, Darren Drager, thank you. And uh, Mark Chipman uh, certainly can't commit to the Jets' name, uh, not at this point in time, but you get the feeling there are thousands of Winnipeg hockey fans uh, at Portage and Maine and at the Forks as well who are already committing to the name. Uh, it has been the most popular choice so far, but we uh, will see what they end up calling this uh, new National Hockey League team uh, that comes from Atlanta. You could see it on the face of Gary Bettman as the celebrating goes on. This is a live look at the Forks in downtown Winnipeg, uh, an historic park and meeting place uh, where they gathered 15 years ago in an effort to uh, rally and save the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, but uh, celebrating today and uh, disappointing, bittersweet for Gary Bettman. I'm sure uh, happy if they had to move a team that it is good to go back to a market that they left. And obvious disappointment uh, on the part of Atlanta hockey fans and uh, the ownership of the Thrashers who released this statement uh, from uh, Bruce Levinson and Michael Guerin on behalf of all the owners. It's extremely disappointing to all of us that it became necessary after all other options were exhausted after extensive effort. Nobody has come forward as a result. Uh, we had no choice but to explore the investment option presented to us by the NHL in the form of True North uh, Sports and Entertainment. We heard Bruce Arthur talking about this a moment ago, that from that standpoint, Atlanta now is much like Winnipeg was uh, a, a while ago, 15 years ago in 96, that uh, it was a money-losing operation and they had no choice but to move the team. But Winnipeg's loss is now Winnipeg's gain as we send you back to James Duthie. James? All right. Thank you very much, Rod. Commissioner Gary Bettman is just ahead. He will join us live. Let's finish the conversation about Canada's place in the NHL with this. And is Quebec City far behind? Gary Bettman was asked the question in the news conference. I'll ask him again, but he's definitely noncommittal at this point. Well, you know, I go back to the conversation I had with the mayor of Quebec City, Regis Lebeau, last spring, and he said, I want to get the arena done because I don't want to miss the opportunity to get a team. And I think what he's speaking to there is he sees that there may be another team. And I think we know right now that Phoenix doesn't have an owner. They have another year to try to close a deal there. The arena in Quebec City, they have approved the financing. There's about $200 million of money from the city, about $200 million of money from the province coming. There is a bit of a legal wrangle where they have awarded a management contract to Quebec or, and they want to make sure that that contract cannot be subject to a lawsuit. In order to do that, they've got to pass a law. That law to give them legal immunity from challenge has not been passed. It's a little bit like the Phoenix situation where, you know, should this have gone to tender before you hand a management contract over. But uh, the money is in place and you know, they, there could be a hole in the ground in Quebec City in not too long. Everything is predicated on the arena. The reason there's a team in Winnipeg now started because they had an arena that was suitable uh, and also an ownership group. It's certainly... Quebec City appears to have an ownership group in place, but right now they don't have a suitable arena. And you want to have that opportunity to act the same way Winnipeg did, and that is be the contingency. If all of a sudden something blows up in middle to late May mm -hmm. in a National Hockey League season with ownership, and you're absolutely right about Phoenix, there's a lot of uncertainty there, as well as some other franchises, then the only way you can do that is if you've got the building and you've got the ownership. And if you have those two pieces, the rest is easy. If you were a betting man, would you bet on Phoenix to Quebec City? I would. And one of the things Gary said in that press conference is he said uh, he thinks that Atlanta is a unique situation. And I just don't think that's the case other than that they're called Atlanta. Uh, I think this was the canary in the coal mine. I think that there's more than one team that's bleeding money and is eventually going to bleed out. And you're going to have to put a team somewhere. And again, the reason Winnipeg got a team is they were the only city in North America that had an owner and had a building. And Quebec has an owner and they're working on the building. So I think that that's where the NHL is going to find safe harbor. Again, because we're Canadian. We're willing to pay for this stuff. If people tuned in in the middle of this and missed our preamble, just some logistics right now. For now, the Winnipeg whatevers will be in the Southeast Division for at least one season. That's correct. They will play in the Southeast Division with Carolina, Washington, Tampa Bay, and Florida. Some good road trips there. <laughs> it's not going to be easy for those teams going to Winnipeg or vice versa, Winnipeg going back there. But that's where they're going to be for one season. And then, as, as we talked about, the situation with Phoenix is a year away from potential resolution. So it, we can get carried away and talk about what might happen. But, yeah, Winnipeg is going to go into the Northwest Division in a perfect scenario. If there's no other shifting going on in terms of Phoenix relocating, then you would uh, take... Uh, one of the teams from the Northwest Division would be Colorado, move it into the Pacific Division, move Dallas into the Central Division, and move Nashville or Columbus, the, the Nashville, or Columbus or Detroit into the East. Is it me, or did that sound like... I know Chipman is all, always very careful with his words, but was that less than a resounding endorsement for, for Dudley? 
as the general manager. I don't want to read too much yeah. into it, but... I think that the important thing he said is that they haven't been allowed to talk to him because he's been the general manager of a team that they don't own. So I, I don't know what kind of endorsement he could give, really, if he hasn't had an opportunity for that team to have the, that, those conversations with him about Dudley's vision for the future, about what True North's vision for the future is, philosophically. Certain the fact that he said he's known Rick Dudley for a long time and has a relationship with him uh, would, I think, suggest that there's room for them to kind of sit down and do this. I thought it was a little bit lukewarm. I, I'm not sure I necessarily expected Mark Shipman or anybody else to come out and say, Rick Dudley He's our general manager, and that's the, the way we're going to go. Um, I think all the logistics are right, that uh, he wasn't in a position to talk to Dudley just yet. But he does keep on saying, Chipman does over and over again, Craig Heisinger will be a very big part of the organization. Does that mean that Heisinger is going to be the general manager? Perhaps. Does that mean that Dudley could be the general manager and Heisinger will be an important part? Understand this about the Atlanta configuration. Rick Dudley did not do contract negotiations in Atlanta. Uh, uh, Sim, uh, Simmons did for, uh, for the Atlanta group with Don right. Waddell. So there is a, uh, there's a layer of missing management that's not coming from Atlanta to Winnipeg that Heisinger could, could fill in. But as I said, uh, if he was named the general manager, it wouldn't surprise me either. This is a question of free agency as well. I, as Canadian hockey fans, we never see it as a problem, uh, playing hockey in Canada. Why would you not want to play hockey in Canada? Do you think it's going to be a real problem? I think it's going to be an issue. I don't think that that's much of a question. The deal is going to be more that it isn't going to be about free agency per se. It's going to be about re-signing your own free agents. In the NHL now, real free agency, the top players don't get there. They're, Winnipeg is going to have to do what a lot of the small southern markets did. They're going to have to build through the draft. They're going to have to retain their own players. And retaining their own players is going to be the trick. Uh, when I talked to Bob Essence during the playoffs, he's the goalie coach for the Boston Bruins, he said that Winnipeg felt like home. He said it was the best place he ever played. And it was a real sense of community. And I think that's what Winnipeg's going to have to foster. That's what they're going to have to build. They're going to have to build a family organization where guys want to stay. Well, and the tricky thing, going back to what I said earlier about them being a mid-range payroll team, when you are one of those teams at the cap, you can occasionally reach out and decide you're going to overpay for a guy who might otherwise not want to come to your team. Going to be tough for Winnipeg to overpay for many players to try to attract them if they're not up at the, the max of the salary cap. And before we even get to the issue of unrestricted free agency, can the, can the new team in Winnipeg sign an unrestricted free agent on July 4th? first the question will become can they retain their players that bruce just mentioned andrew ladd will be the first big test for this team he's the captain of the the atlanta thrashers that are now moving to winnipeg his deal with atlanta came very very that close to getting done but they couldn't agree on some final financial terms now that becomes the responsibility for either rick dudley in winnipeg or craig heisinger or whomever and Andrew Ladd's an interesting case. He's one year away from unrestricted free agency. He's currently a restricted free agent. He's got a great arbitration case if he decides to go to arbitration and do very well there. He can decide whether he wants to make a long-term commitment to the team now that it's in Winnipeg. Hmm. And if, they, if he does that, then it'll be, it'll be a wonderful way to pave the future. But if he decides, you know what, I'd rather play somewhere else, then it sets it off on sort of that other direction. Let's get some more reaction now and send it back to Rod Smith. Thank you very much. I'm joined by the uh, Premier of Manitoba, Greg Salinger. And uh, Greg, it's an exciting time for Winnipeg hockey fans, but speak to us from a provincial standpoint. What does this mean for the province? It's a huge opportunity for Manitobans, and they're so excited about having the team come back. There's a very strong ho hockey culture in Manitoba, as you know, uh, right from the very youngest ages right up to the NHL. We've always believed we can support an NHL franchise, and now we're going to prove it. And, uh, you know, we've got great ownership with True North and Mark Chipman. They've proven that they can run a hockey team at a very high level of professionalism. We worked with the uh, ownership to build this new facility here, which is a first-class facility. So all the elements are in place, the fans, the facility, and the ownership. This story has been wrought with speculation from start yeah. to finish, and that's not unusual in the business of professional sport. Uh, and that includes what sort of role financially the provincial yeah. government will play in the return of the National Hockey League. Can you clarify that for us? Yes, we uh, supported the construction of the new facility. And now we're going to make revenues available through gaming to continue to support paying down the debt on the facility. So the facility will look after itself. It uh, provides a tremendous community benefit. We have a community use agreement, uh, so we can justify that. And that will allow the owners to concentrate on making the NHL franchise viable and successful. So it works very well together. Do you or the province, do you have any input in the selection of the name of this uh, team? And if so, uh, will it be... The Manitoba Jets, the Manitoba yeah. Moose, yeah. what might it be? We'll leave the name up to the owners and Manitobans, but you know what? I think Manitoba is very engaged and committed to the NHL franchise, so I wouldn't be surprised if Manitoba factors into the ultimate name uh, for the team. Good day for the province. Fantastic day. Congratulations. Thank you.
Greg Salinger, the uh, Premier of Manitoba, joining us today as the coverage continues here live at the MTS Centre. Now back to the desk. All right, Darren. Well, the main thing for Manitobans, uh, especially those in Winnipeg right now, is that the National Hockey League, 15 years away after the Jets moved to the desert to become the Phoenix Coyotes, and now get a team. It was the Atlanta Thrashers uh, pending approval uh, at ratification by the Board of Governors June 21st to become uh, a Winnipeg team in the National Hockey League yet to be made. So that is being celebrated in Winnipeg, uh, right downtown at Portage and Main, and also at the Forks, uh, a meeting place. Uh, for them as well. So uh, it is a big day. I mean, this is a Winnipeg Pro Hockey starting. You saw the banner shot earlier, 1972 to 1996. Of course, in 72, it was the World Hockey Association right up until they joined the NHL in 1979. The NHL back in Winnipeg. That's a live look at the Forks in downtown Winnipeg as lots of hockey fans gather. Our coverage of the NHL returning to Winnipeg continues after this. Uh, it's another live look at the Forks in downtown Winnipeg uh, and more subdued now, I would think, uh, with the anticipation over the last few weeks and, and a feeling in the part of many, even though it wasn't done until the wee hours of the morning, that indeed the National Hockey League would be returning to Winnipeg. The announcement made in the last hour, uh, formally made at the MTS Center in Winnipeg that the National Hockey League uh, would be back. So a very sweet day for hockey fans in Manitoba. As mentioned before, what would be a rather bittersweet day for the National Hockey League because Winnipeg's gain means the loss of a market. Gary Bettman has said many times he does not like uh, moving teams. That was a decision that had to be made with the Thrashers going. More on that now. Let's go back to Studio 6 and James Duthie. James. All right, thank you, Rod, and we'll go right to Winnipeg where the Commissioner of the National Hockey League, Gary Bettman, joins us. First of all, Gary, did, did you ever see this day coming, that the NHL would return to Winnipeg? I knew that there would always be a chance, but in order to do it, we'd have to be relocating a franchise or expanding, and the timing of those two things was always in question. But I never doubted the fact that uh, Winnipeg wanted a franchise back. You mentioned in your news conference the number of different market conditions that exist now as opposed to 1996. Is there one or two of those, do you think, that is most important in hockey coming back to Winnipeg? Well, the most important thing for any franchise is ownership. And having Mark Chipman and David Thompson is at the top of the list. But also, if you think back to 96, this building that we're standing in didn't exist. Uh, we didn't have the same collective bargaining agreement that we have now. And I believe the, the market from an economic standpoint for Winnipeg and Manitoba is stronger than it was. How long have you been working behind the scenes? I know the relationship goes back to 2007 and beyond uh, with Chipman and Thompson and that group. but. Focusing in on Atlanta moving to Winnipeg, when did these discussions start? Well, those discussions started probably a few weeks ago. Uh, I think the, the focus initially was what was going to happen with Phoenix and it would, when it was clear that the Coyotes weren't going to move and it was clear that the ownership in Atlanta was, was desperately looking to sell and couldn't find a local owner, things came together relatively quickly. But despite all the speculation, as we discussed at the press conference, as of 4.30 this morning, Eastern Time, this deal still wasn't done. Everybody overwhelmed in Winnipeg today, but you have to see both sides of it. You mentioned how a franchise hadn't moved in 14 years, and you obviously take great pride in that. So how bittersweet is this day for you? It's always bittersweet. We're thrilled to be returning a team to Canada. We're thrilled to be coming back to Winnipeg. But the decision to leave Atlanta is a painful one. You know that we don't like to relocate franchises. But the one thing I want to make clear is we're not moving from Atlanta to Winnipeg because we think Winnipeg is better. May well be. The decision had to be made first that we were not viable any longer, that nobody wanted to own a franchise any longer in Atlanta. Then you make the decision as to where you want to go. And, and you know how protective we are of our franchises and, and our fans, and we only view relocation as a last resort without regard to how good the place is that we may be going. So what do you say to the hockey fans in Atlanta today? We're really sorry it didn't work out, uh, and, and we wish the circumstances could have been different. So with Atlanta moving, uh, Phoenix troubles continue. Are you still bullish on hockey in the Sun Belt? The, the question is, is an overgeneralization. It has nothing to do with hockey in the Sun Belt. No different than when 
Winnipeg and Quebec moved in the 90s and everybody said there'd only be one team left in Canada. Every situation is different and obviously the city of Glendale who's supporting the losses of the Coyotes for another year believes that they're close to getting that franchise sold. When, when you look at hockey in the Sun Belt, you need to look at how well Tampa Bay is doing under new ownership. You need to look at Carolina. You need to look uh, at Anaheim. You, you need to look at the fact that, that Dallas has been strong and won the Stanley Cup. Uh, please, let's not overgeneralize this. Let's not get people excited or, or disappointed over the possibilities of future relocations because we're going to do, as we always have, try to make things work where we are. Okay, but you did call Canada the heart and soul of hockey, uh, which I believe now, of course. Every, everybody agrees yeah. that's a fair assessment. So right. how close would Quebec City be? Would it be the next most viable place if something happens? We're, we're not going to speculate. We're not going to build expectations. We, we don't operate that way. And as much as you and your colleagues in the media would like to engage in that type of speculation and, and emotion arousal, we're just not going to do it. People shouldn't assume we're moving any other franchises for the foreseeable future. You've seen our panel. We do, we don't, there's no, not much emotional arousal from most of our panel topics. Um, I don't know about that. We, we could have a good debate about that. You talk, they, they really pushed hard on the season ticket drive in the news conference, and you yourself were the first to mention the 13,000 season tickets, and you said it doesn't work if the building is not full. Is that a bit of a, a scary notion for you that right away before the team has even started, you're saying it has to have the building full every single game? Well, I think everybody here agrees that this is a passionate market and that this building should be filled with, without much effort. I think it's a good message to send to the Board of Governors who will have this on their agenda on June 21st to be able to walk in there and say the building is going to be full or close to full on a season ticket basis. Uh, I'm not sure why anybody who, who has believed that we should be back in Winnipeg should have any concern about the season ticket drive, which is something that's important to any franchise, particularly one starting up again. I don't think anybody's concerned right now, and even in the early years, there'll be such passion. But all teams go through down phases, and if your business model is based on selling out every single game, is that not troublesome at all down the road potentially? Well, first of all, you have to remember this is a 15,000-seat building. So I think in terms of its intimacy and the need to keep people in the building, uh, it would be very important for this franchise to have the building full. Now, you go from Atlanta, major market in the United States, certainly television-wise, to Winnipeg, which is a passionate market but not big, and the smallest market in the National Hockey League. What about things that are a concern to you every day, like the TV footprint? right now and how does that how does the move impact that uh, I don't think it impacts it at all. I think we'll, we'll be fine. We're doing quite well in the United States, particularly as evidenced by our new agreement with the NBC Sports Group for NBC and Versus, soon to be renamed. Uh, the game is alive and well, both in Canada and in the United States, very strong in both places, and we're very excited about our future prospects. Finally, they talked about working late into the morning. You talked about a 4.30 a.m. conference call. This must have been very important to you to get it over with before the Stanley Cup final so everyone could focus on Vancouver and Boston. Is that a fair assessment? Actually, no, because our concern about getting it done was if it didn't get done by today, I had a concern it might get, not get done at all. And so the Stanley Cup final obviously is our jewel crown event, and we want everybody to be focused on the game tomorrow night. And frankly, outside of, of Winnipeg and Atlanta, I think more people are focused on the Stanley Cup final who are hockey fans than anything else. But uh, this deal might not have come together at all if it didn't come together when it did. What do, what do you mean by that? Were there some... We were running out of time. Okay, it couldn't have happened next week, or it had to happen. I guess June 21st would have been the deadline before the Board of Governors meeting, correct? We, we, we have a schedule that has to get done for next season. Did, we were running out of time. Did you have doubts into the final hours whether it would get done on time? I, I always operate under the adage that a deal isn't done until it's done. All right. uh, Commissioner Gary Bettman, we'll see you in Vancouver. Look forward to it. Thank you. All right, that is the Commissioner of the National Hockey League. Ah, let's send it back to Rod Smith. We'll be back with some more panel in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you, James. Uh, and a lot more reaction uh, coming up as well to what has transpired today with the National Hockey League going to Winnipeg. The Board of Governors uh, meeting in New York, I believe, on the 21st of June to uh, make it official. And that is certainly uh, expected to happen. But there are a number of players of the Atlanta Thrashers that uh, are finding out that 
They're going to Winnipeg, that the team will be moving there. Of course, uh, not a very well-kept secret over the last few weeks that that was a strong possibility of happening. And one member of the Thrashers joining me now from London, Ontario, where he starred in junior hockey with the Knights for many years, Robbie Shrimp. Uh, first of all, Robbie, your reaction to uh, the team in Atlanta now becoming the team in Winnipeg? Oh, it's, it, I think it's very exciting. Uh, it's a good time. Uh, getting a chance to play in Canada you know, for my junior career and seeing how passionate the fans were and how crazy they are about hockey was, uh, was a great eye-opener for me being American. And uh, to have the team go back to a place like Winnipeg and see how passionate they are about the team, just when it was a possibility of going back there, they were so crazy about it. Uh, it was very exciting. So it, I think it's a good time. Something you personally look forward to? Oh, absolutely. I, like I said, I love playing hockey in Canada. Um, you know, it was nice playing in Atlanta. It was, it was great there. I actually had an aunt and uncle that lived down there, so it was pretty cool to have family close. But I just feel like, uh, you know, having, having a chance to play back in Canada is just such a, it's a good opportunity. And, um, you know, I love playing up here, and the country's great. I love the people up here, so it's, it's definitely fun. I live here in the off season, so obviously I like being in Canada. Uh, what was it like? The, uh, the rumors really didn't develop. There was so much uh, focus on Phoenix, that possibility, uh, that it really didn't develop until later on with Atlanta. But did you have a feeling, and you only joined them from the Islanders back at the end of February, but in those months leading up, did you have a feeling uh, that your stay in Atlanta, that anyone's stay in Atlanta, wouldn't be for very much longer? Uh, I've got to be honest with you, not at all. I never even thought about that for a second. That never, uh, never even crossed my mind, so... It was pretty big. It was kind of a big shock to hear, it. you know, when I did hear it, it was like, well, I never even thought about that. So, um, no, but now that now that's gone through, it's it's cool. It's definitely exciting. And it was like I said, it was a bit of a shock when I did hear because I never once I got there, I never even thought about it. I was just thinking about being in Atlanta and playing down south. And, um, you know, it was just kind of a shock when I did hear it. Now, your original NHL team, of course, was the Edmonton Oilers, and there is a parallel that's been discussed being uh, a northern team, a smaller market. Do you think it will be difficult for the new Winnipeg team to attract free agents? Uh, that's hard for me to talk about. I don't really know. I, I know for me personally, I, it doesn't really matter. I love playing hockey. I love the cold weather. Uh, you know, it's just for me, growing up in upstate New York, when, when the snow started to come and it started to get cold, that was hockey season. So. Uh, that's always when I, I feel like I'm, you know, I have the most fun and I'm the happiest when the hockey season's coming around. So for me, I, I wouldn't matter to me if I was a free agent to, to sign there. I would go there for sure. It's just, and like I said, I love playing in Canada. So the fans, they, they make you, there's a sense of accountability when you play in Canada. You got to make sure you perform because they, they know the game, they watch the game. And um, I like that kind of pressure and that kind of feeling to play in Canada where people know the game and, uh, you know, they, they cheer for every hit. They cheer for everything that you do positive. And, and when you do something bad, you also know about it, too. So um, it's, so, it's so much fun playing in Canada. And Winnipeg, you know, we're gonna be, it's going to be fun to play there. I don't know why anybody wouldn't want to go. Yeah, now I should point out you're a restricted free agent, but it certainly sounds from the tone of your voice you're quite interested in playing in Winnipeg. And, uh, oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I just I love playing hockey. It's like I'll play anywhere. I don't really care where it is. As long as I get to play hockey, that's... My dream to play in the NHL, and if it's in Winnipeg, it's, that's the best. Uh, it would be a great, great well, scenario. Well, if, uh, if Rob, uh, it was an awkward question to ask you about, uh, about other free agents signing with Winnipeg, perhaps a more awkward one about the name of the team, because this could be polarizing right now. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard, there are a lot of fans in Winnipeg. I mean, it's, it's the Jets are bust by the sounds of things, and I don't know what um, Mark Chipman uh, has planned in terms of whether there'll be a name the team contest, or that hasn't been worked out yet because they just got the deal done. You care to weigh in on that, on whether it should be Jets or uh, some other name? Uh, it doesn't really matter to me. I think whatever the fans want to... You know, whatever makes the fans the happiest, I believe. I mean, we're going to be out there performing for the fans and um, going to battle every night for the fans. So I think whatever the fans want to support, I, maybe that's just my opinion, but whatever the fans are going to support and what they want to support is, is the, pro, the sweater that I'll throw over proudly and uh, go out and play. And so, you know, whatever makes them happy is make, will, will be fine with me. I don't really have an opinion on it. All I right. Just, Rob, uh, Shemp, Rob Shremp uh, in London, uh, that's well answered, too. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, we'll look for you in a Winnipeg uniform. All right, thank you very much. Okay, Rob Schremp uh, in London. So uh, could be part of the makeup uh, as a restricted free agent uh, from the Atlanta Thrashers now moving to Winnipeg. Uh, how about the makeup of that team? Let's send it over to Steve Coolius and Craig Button. Thanks very much, Rod. Uh, every team needs building blocks going forward, and this is not like an expansion team, a San Jose 91-92 or 
the Winnipeg Jets, uh, when they came into the NHL, are the Ottawa Senators going back to 92-93. There are some pieces in place and some talent in this organization. Craig, let's go through it with a fine-tooth comb, beginning with the defense and the men between the pipes. Here's a look at the depth chart, if you will. And when you look at the goaltenders in Andre Pavlik, who played 50 plus games last year as the number one in Chris Mason, how would you evaluate this one two punch as it compares to the rest of the NHL? I think they have a bona fide number one in Andre Pavlik, and they have a real good backup in Chris Mason. And when you look at a combo like that, I think they're very capable of having success with those two guys. The belief, the strength of this team is on the blue line. Dustin Bufflin, Tobias Enstrom, Ron Hainsey, who are all signed for the next few years. Then there's Zach Bogosian as well. There have been some rumblings that he might be moved, but this is a strong top four group. It, it really is, and I think if they could add a number, a, another defenseman that could take up a lot of minutes and play and take some of the pressure off of those top three guys, Bufflin, uh, Enstrom and Bogosian. Bogosian's emerging. We saw what happened with Bufflin last year. Better be real careful about moving a good young player like Bogosian. Enstrom is a is a smaller player, but he plays big and he really is an important player for Dustin Bufflin. Mark Stewart, a competitor. Johnny Oduya know how to play. If they could add one more defenseman and they could play in that top four, I think they could be a real, real strong group of uh, defense. Now, up front, as we take a look at the projected four lines and the way they stood at the end of the campaign, there is some talent up front, most notably Andrew Ladd, but as Bob has alluded to throughout the program, a restricted free agent, six years in the NHL, has already won two Stanley Cups, coming off a career year. Ryan Little, two years ago, 31 goals. We've got Vermeestrop in the mix, Kane in the mix. Who of this group do you really, really like with this club in the future? Well, I really, really like Andrew Ladd, and if you're going to build with youth and you look at Alex Vermeestrop and Evander Kane, Brian Little emerging. You need that leadership. It is so imperative to have players like Andrew Ladd who know what it takes to win, that have the respect because of their uh, winning. Up the middle of the ice, I think they're really light. Nick Antropov right now appears to be their number one center. Simply not good enough. If you're going to compete in the National Hockey League, and eventually the Winnipeg franchise is going to be in the Western Conference, yep. Sedins, Getzla, Thornton, Jonathan Taze, you better have some good defense, a good centerman to play in that area. And right now, Alex Bimitrov is too young. Nick Antropov is not good enough. It's a glaring hole in that lineup. We're going to look at the prospects in the organization and talk about the draft in just a moment. But one thing people have to realize, by my calculations, $35 million have been spent so far. The cap next year could be at 60 plus. This team has money to spend going into free agency and beyond. Yes, they do have money to spend, but for a franchise like Winnipeg, you have to be able to supplement what you have, and they have to be really smart in who they sign. It doesn't always have to be the high price guys and how you figure out how to attract those high-end guys. It's about completing a team. It's not so much the, the, the team with the best players. It's the best team of players that make up a successful group on the ice. Yeah, they're going to draft seventh overall in the upcoming draft. We'll have more on that later on, but first, let's go back to Rod Smith. All right, Steve, uh, Craig, thank you very much. Now, uh, in the national media, this has been brewing more in the last few weeks and months. For the local media in Winnipeg, of course, this has been something that has been in the process they've been following uh, for years, and that includes a columnist with the Winnipeg Free Press, Gary Lawless, who uh, joins me now, yes, from the MTS Centre. Hey, Gary, uh, you know, I just first of all, get your impression of the way it played out today, because as said in the weeks leading up, it seemed more a matter of uh, when, uh, certainly not if, that Atlanta would come. And that was after all the speculation with Phoenix. But uh, your thoughts on how things have finally transpired today? I got off the phone last night at around 12.15 uh, with True North. They still didn't have a deal. They didn't know if they were going to announce a press conference. I got a phone call this morning at 4.15 a.m. telling me to be on standby. And uh, ever since then, really, it's just been... Uh, uh, kind of manic uh, and uh, culminated really when we saw Mark Chipman and Gary Bettman walk into that media room for the start of this press conference. When I got to Winnipeg uh, in 1999, talking about the return of the NHL, it was a dirty word. You didn't mention it in the press box. You didn't mention it in the dressing room. And uh, we've come a long way as a community to get to this point where today we're talking about the return of the NHL to, uh, to the province of Manitoba. Well, I mean, and it is different now, and I'm sure that much different even from 1999, especially after they got the MTS Centre built in 2004. And you could see certainly the possibility with the ownership behind them that they were prepared to bring a National Hockey League team back. Uh, does it feel different, and does it feel like it will work long-term this time? Oh, for sure. You know, Winnipeg as a community has changed dramatically over that time. I think that uh, our economy is, it's never a boom and bust kind of place. Our economy just sort of 
very slowly inches inches forward. The uh, price of real estate has, has increased quite a bit in the past few years. But most, most importantly, we have a new building and in ownership, a partnership of the Chipman family and David Thompson, who is here today and made a very pointed uh, remark in the press conference where he said he is committed to Winnipeg and to True North. That's, you know, that's a very, very solid ownership group, which we did not have here in uh, 1996. Um, speculate about the name. I know we all have, and I know that a lot of the sentiment is. It, do you think that it, uh, that it will be Jets overwhelmingly? Do you think there's even a chance it'll be Jets? Or are they definitely going the other way? You know, th th this has been a question that when you went to ask it, uh, Mark Chipman isn't prone to snapping, but uh, the few times I've asked him about the name, I've been uh, cut off very quickly and uh, told that uh, he didn't want to talk about it. I My belief is no, that they do not want to call the the team Jets and that uh, they want to start a new brand of uh, success and a new standard uh, of excellence which uh, you know it wasn't always associated with the Jets. They lost uh, 30 games in a row one season, only won nine games one season uh, you know and and they failed as a franchise and left. I think that they want to to create a brand of, uh, of excellence and success. That's just my own opinion. I have not been uh, been illuminated uh, on that subject any more than than what I've just told you. Covering the story for uh, quite a, a few years, I know, as it's built up to this day. Gary Lawless of the Winnipeg Free Press, thank you for this. Thank you. And uh, more reaction now. We heard from one uh, player and Rob Shrimp. I believe we're going to hear from another, too, as we send it back over to James Duthie. Yes, thank you very much, Rod. Eric Bolton is with us, and he's going to be one of the, the test cases of exactly what we've been talking about. Eric Bolton has played with the Atlanta Thrashers for six seasons, but he's an unrestricted free agent right now. Uh, first of all, your reaction to this news? Well, it's a very emotional day. Uh, sad to leave Atlanta, sad for the city, sad for the fans. Um, but on the other hand, you're very excited to go to uh, go back to Canada and, and play in, in front of a Canadian crowd that's uh, obviously going to be very excited and are getting a, a good young team here. So you may have answered my first question. Would you like to play in Winnipeg? I would love to play in Winnipeg. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think the, the excitement level is going to be through the roof. Uh, like I said, we have a good, uh, good organization going up there. We have uh, you know, the leadership there with Rick Dudley, who's doing a tremendous job putting this team uh, back on the right track, uh, as long, along with the coaches, Craig Ramsey, and uh, a lot of good young players. It's, just, uh, it's, it's a tough day today to, to leave uh, you know, where you've been living here for so many years and enjoying the city. It's, uh, it's definitely emotional. And that's, that's the other part of this. So we always talk about just the hockey players, but there's, you have a family. You have a wife who is from Atlanta. You have four young children. Uh, first of all, tell me what it's been like in your household. G give me their reaction to knowing they have to leave the city. Well, it's been tough on my wife. Uh, she obviously is from here and loves it. Um, you know, we've, we've made this the home. The kids are playing hockey down here. Uh, the minor hockey is actually growing down here uh, a lot in the last few years. Uh, the daughter's in gymnastics, and the little one's starting gymnastics, gymnastics today, actually. So, um, you know, it's, it's tough, but we haven't really uh, talked to the kids about it. We gave them a little bit of a heads up, but uh, we were waiting to, for the official announcement before we got the, you know, fill, filled them in with the details. But do you think that might eventually factor into your decision? Uh, maybe if your wife wants to be closer to home, or, or you can take it into a, a bigger perspective to other teammates on your team. How much does that come into play? Well, I think, uh, you know, my job is to play hockey, and uh, my family will go wherever uh, they need to go to, uh, to do that. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a big transition for a lot of people. Um, myself, um, inclu uh, it would be a very big transition having four kids, but... You know, uh, they're willing to, we've moved around before and we're willing to do it again. And I think uh, Winnipeg is, uh, it's going to be definitely exciting. And uh, I know a lot of the guys are sad to leave Atlanta, but they're definitely looking forward to playing in, in front of a Canadian crowd. How concerned, or how much concern is there amongst the Thrashers about the situation next year where you're just going to have an awful road schedule where you, if you're in the Southeast Division, you're going to be in the Southeast Division making all those long trips. How do the guys feel about that? Well, that was that was news to me to, uh, just the other day that we'd stay in the southeast, but you know that could work to our advantage. A lot of the teams, especially in the playoffs this year, have been uh, winning on the road. So um, you could say it could be a disadvantage. Who knows? Uh, it would definitely be away from Winnipeg a lot, but uh, you know the camaraderie you find on the road, and it's uh, some guys find it easier to play on the road. So who knows what the 
the uh, outcome will be on that. Well, you, you've made your feelings clear. You're a Canadian boy from Nova Scotia, but uh, what is the general feeling amongst all, all of your teammates? Are, are most of the guys keen to go? Well, the, the guy I haven't talked to too many guys about it, but the guys I've talked to, um, they really haven't said much about uh, playing at Winnipeg. They, they've been kind of, you know, we're just trying to find out what was going on here the last month. Uh, there's been so many rumors and we're trying to get inside information and nobody knew and everyone I talked to, nobody knows anything. So, um, but the, the few guys I have talked to, I mean, they're excited about going and playing. Um, the, they, they, the, 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 the guys in Atlanta really did like Atlanta though. Uh, the fans were, that showed up to the games, um, not too much in the last few years, but they were very passionate fans and we can't blame the fans one bit here. It's, uh, it's, it's a great city. Um, we just wish it could have worked out here. Is it though, the reality is you said the fans that did show up, there was a lot of time, those, the building was half empty. So how much do you look forward if you, if you sign with Winnipeg to playing before capacity almost every single night? Well, it's definitely going to be exciting. Uh, it, it's been a long time since uh, I played in full buildings down here, and the atmosphere is uh, is tremendous. And you know, when you go on the road, some of the buildings are full. But you know, just being in that uh, the knowledge that the the, the fans have in, in Winnipeg and the excitement level, it's uh, I can't even imagine what it's going to be like. But it's definitely exciting. Well, good luck with your summer and your decision making, and uh, tell your daughter to be careful on the balance beam, Eric Bolton. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Eric Bolton, an unrestricted free agent with the Atlanta Thrashers, who will have some decisions to make come July 1st. Let's send it back to Rod Smith. All right, James, 13,000 season tickets. That is what they want. That's how many they want sold by the time the Board of Governors uh, meets to uh, vote on the move from Atlanta to Winnipeg, and that will be on the 21st of June, three weeks away. And uh, the pre-sale begins tomorrow. That's for uh, season ticket holders with the Manitoba Moose. And then uh, on Saturday, it opens up for everyone. Lots of fans there gauging by this reaction. It shouldn't be too hard to sell the season tickets. A much anticipated return of the NHL to Winnipeg. We'll have more right after this. Celebration in downtown Winnipeg uh, today. To those of you uh, just watching the French Open on TSN, welcome. Uh, it's the NHL returning to Winnipeg. Rod Smith with James Duthie now. We've had a lot of reaction on uh, the announcement that was made a little over an hour ago today, uh, about an hour and a half ago at the MTS Center, the new home of the Winnipeg's NHL team. James? Yeah, fascinating talking to Eric Bolton, whose wife is from Atlanta and four young children and the difficult decisions he'll have to make. Few guys know the business of hockey better than Don Baisley, and few people know the market in Winnipeg better than Don Baisley. Prominent NHL agent, he is based in Winnipeg, and he brought guys like the Nielsens, Kenton Ulf Nielsen, and Henberg, Hedberg over to the uh, Jets back where the, when they were in the uh, WHA. Donnie, uh, first of all, what do you think is the biggest difference between 96 when the team left and today as they return? Uh, the biggest, the biggest single difference in my mind is, uh, is, is the fact that Mark Chip, Chipman uh, took hold of the, the this thing and, and moved with it. And he, when, when the uh, disappointment of losing the team in '96 occurred, Mark was part of it, but he was a young entrepreneur in town at that time, and he, he brought a uh, minor professional team in, had a building built here. Uh, now had a, ha, has us in the NHL. It's a remarkable accomplishment in, in 15 years. And, and to me, he's the biggest single difference in, in what's taking place. There are all, the, all the other factors about currency and, and uh, uh, the, the building, which he's responsible for, uh, new collective bargaining. None of that matters if there's no Mark Chipman to carry the ball. So much has changed since you negotiated those WHA signings I was talking about, the Nielsens and Anders Hedberg. Do you anticipate there'll be any issue with the Winnipeg franchise attracting free agents? Not, not, um, not an extraordinary issue. If, if the team's competitive and uh, uh, they have a reputation for uh, doing things the right way, uh, it won't be a big issue. I, I don't recall uh, 
players objecting uh, to going to Edmonton in the early 80s when the Oilers were doing so well. Um, of course, there's going to be isolated situations where people have connections um, elsewhere, but uh, we're we're pretty close to hockey here in Winnipeg, so I don't I don't think. Uh, I don't think that's going to be a big issue. One more for you. You represent Tamu Solani, and we don't have a schedule yet, but according to the way the schedule works, the Anaheim Ducks were supposed to be in Atlanta this year, so we'll assume that they will be in Winnipeg, and Tamu Solani is still not decided on his future. How special would it be to have Tamu Solani play at least one more game in Winnipeg, and can you influence him that way somehow? <laughs> I don't know if I can influence him that way, but uh, there's no question that Tamu would be a big deal if uh, he came in. Uh, he had that magical year here uh, in 90, uh, 93, 94, or 92, 93, and uh, uh, it, it's still a big thing around this time, so, uh, town. So if, if he were to be playing next year, they would love, love him to be here. And I think he said his loyalty is to Anaheim, but I have to ask this because Jets fans have been asking me on Twitter nonstop. Is there any chance that Tamu Solani would consider playing in Winnipeg? Well, I think Tamu is pretty ensconced in uh, Southern California. His uh, family's been raised there. I, I, I don't see that happening. All right, Don Baisley, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, James. All right, uh, that is Don Bainsley. Well, you've heard, you certainly Eric Bolton said all the right things. And, and that must be difficult conversations going on in this household, frankly, because we all have families and we know what it's like to have to move a family. But what do you guys think is the truth about what's going on in those, in those households in Atlanta? Do you think, well, first of all, let's talk about the team moving. Do you think there is trepidation of players going from Atlanta uh, to Winnipeg? If I, if I could speak with personal experience for a second, as somebody with a Southern American wife, going, it, it, it's a challenge. I mean, it really is. It, when, when people go from a climate of living in, in the southern United States to going to a smaller Canadian city that is relatively isolated, I think for those guys that have roots in Atlanta, in their families, it's going to be a tough conversation. It's trepidation no matter what because it's a relocation. I mean, these guys just got traded and they didn't get traded. It's a, it's a weird phenomenon, but that's exactly what it is. Hmm. There's a huge amount of these guys. A lot of these guys have put roots down in their community. Now they have to pull them up and go, but that's part of the hockey equation. And the Phoenix Coyotes of players have lived with that shroud hanging over their head for years now. In Atlanta, it was a shorter period of time that they actually dealt with it, but they knew this was a possibility. And at the end of the day, it's a, it's a mercenary business. You've got a contract, go. Go where you're told to go and make the best of it. And as far as the free agency issue goes, people can say all they want. It is going to be an issue because it has been an issue for the Edmonton Oilers. They'd admit that. Then this is a town that has 400,000 fewer people than Edmonton. This is going to be the smallest market in the league by a long ways and quite possibly the toughest climate. This is going to be tough on players. This organization, they say they have a plan and they better have a pretty good one because right now they're stepping into an NHL with a $46 million cap floor where players go where players want to go. And I just don't know how it's going to work well, for them. Well, it's funny because Mark Chipman mentioned that we're not going to go out and buy a team. We want to draft and develop players. And I think in a lot of small markets, in all sports, if you look at it, teams in small markets generally have an easier time developing and retaining players than they do going out and attracting players who don't know the city. And I think that's going to see the, be the philosophy that we're going to see play out in Winnipeg. See, and the, the, the collective bargaining agreement that Gary Bettman talked about is a double-edged sword because, yeah, there is more cost certainty than there was in terms of you, you can't have teams like Detroit and Philadelphia and Toronto running away with $100 million payrolls. You're going to be able to stay within that range. But the flip side or the extra edge of that sword is that uh, you get free agency earlier than ever in the National Hockey League. You get a real good player comes in at 18, he's an unrestricted free agent by the time he's 25 years old. So it's not like the old days where you hung on to your players until they were 30. Right. The unrestricted free agents, those are some of the issues. But as Gary Bettman said, this is the day about emotional arousal. <laughs> as the NHL hockey does a U-turn and 15 years later returns to Winnipeg. Back to you, Rod. All right, thank you, James. Uh, guys, uh, by the way, the second time the city of Atlanta has lost an NHL team. Remember the Flames who came in as, as an expansion club with the New York Islanders back in 1972 and 1980? They became, of course, the Calgary Flames, uh, perhaps a future rival once again to the other former Atlanta team uh, now in Winnipeg that will play in the Southeast Division for now. Uh, but you have to think there will be realignment and they would end up in the uh, Northwest Division. To be determined, for now, all that matters to these fans, the NHL, back in the capital, Manitoba. We'll be back. Truly, Martha, and my spirit early this morning reached an agreement that would bring the NHL back to the city.
The reaction from thousands of fans today at the Forks in downtown Winnipeg. And that was uh, nearly two hours ago uh, when uh, Gary Bettman uh, spoke at the news conference at the MTS Center, Mark Chipman before then, announcing that the Atlanta Thrashers would indeed be moving to Winnipeg pending uh, approval, uh, which is expected to go through at a meeting of the Board of Governors on the 21st of June, three weeks uh, from now. So other questions, many of them, including the uh, franchise uh, name, will it be Jets, will it be something else yet to be determined, including the management team and everything else. But for now, uh, the NHL heading back to Winnipeg at the expense of the Atlanta Thrashers. We will have much more uh, on this story coming up uh, later today on Sports Center at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific time. Uh, as we say goodbye, we leave you with uh, some of the sounds of the news conference earlier today that, yes, an historic day for hockey fans in Manitoba. The NHL is back. Thanks for watching. NHL, welcome home. On behalf of my family, our partner David Thompson, and our entire organization, I am excited beyond words to announce our purchase of the Atlanta Thrashers. In a sense, I guess you could say the true north, our city and our province has received the call we've long since been waiting for. It is clear that times have changed for Winnipeg as an NHL market. And this is a wonderful time to add a club to Canada. Hockey in Canada has never been stronger. It's great to have you back here. It's great to have you back here where you belong. And uh, we've missed you, and we're going to make it work forever now that you're back.